Our first guest tonight is a very funny lady who's parlayed her obsession with questionable celebrities and bad reality shows into an Emmy-winning career. The fifth season of Kathy Griffin, My Life on the D-List, airs Mondays at 10 on Bravo. Please say hello to Kathy Griffin. <laughs> It's always great to have you here. Thank you for coming. And they love you. This is fantastic. I told you people love you. That's the best audience I've ever had here, seriously. Well, you they say it's the best the audience I've ever had after doing the show. Thank you. Wow. I gotta tell you, it's funny because they were kind of so-so for me. Did you give them a little yeah. crystal? Kids love crystal. They really, <laughs> they really enjoy it. I assume you're talking about crystal light iced tea. Yes, yes. I am. Uh, meth. Now look, I um, <laughs> I think you should know that after this, I'm having kind of a A-list night. After the, I can't stay long. Uh -huh. I'm going to a um, self magazine party. Oh really? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not doing so much comedy. I'm doing more bikini modeling now. Yeah, I didn't notice and, that yeah. about you. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I have actually been invited to a self magazine party. Why? I don't know. That's a fitness magazine. <laughs> I know. Are you in the magazine this month? Uh, no, I'm trying to get in the magazine. <laughs> what do you mean? Because, well, all right. So I was photographed with your BFF, Paris Hilton. Yes, yes, who yes. Who apparently now you're smitten with. Tell <laughs> well, me. Listen, she was on the show. What do you think? You're on the hills? You're not she, on the hills, honey. The day. Can I tell you something you're going right, to like? Come on. The day after she was on the show, and this has never happened before, she made me a pan of lasagna. She sent it over. Okay, you and are I ate so it. full of <laughs> right now. I can't even. <laughs> what are you talking about? You, all right, here's what really happened. She called her gay, had him go to the store, get a nice Pyrex plate. Uh -huh. Then they called the chef at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and that's whose lasagna you ate. Exactly. That's Hilton. I don't care. She can't smell lasagna. She doesn't know what it is. You two are like this. <laughs> You, you know what? No, it was good. Now, do you think she cooked it like that Carl's Jr. ad where she was like in a bikini, it was all sloppy, and there's tomato sauce? Do you think she made it on top of a car while thinking of you, Jimmy? <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, what I imagine. You're saying that that's I'm not the case? I'm saying it might not be true. Or why are you here to smash my dreams? Paris Hilton <laughs> made me lasagna. She sent a note saying, I made this lasagna. Hold it. Hold, she wait, wait, hold lie. on. Did you say note? Yeah. All right, so you think she can write? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, this is no way to talk about your friends now. That's true. We are BFFs. In fact, she was on the D-list. This year on the D-list, where Monday we had the highest rating in the history of the show. Congratulations. And thank you. And so we... It's good this year. I promise it's good. So we have the most wild assortment of guests. We literally have... We had Paris Hilton on. Um, Paula Dean is on next week, and I know you like to cook. Yes, she's Paula Dean, Southern chef, who is so fantastic, and deep fries everything. She does, And then yeah. puts two sticks of butter on it, and I love her. And, uh, and then we, we had um, author Salman Rushdie. How, how, why? Because I like people with a fatwa on their head. I always have. <laughs> I've had a few myself by yeah. Barbara Walters. And, um, and I'm actually writing a book, and so I meet with authors. And, of course, Salman Rushdie and I have a lot in common. Oh, yeah. Yes, we run in the uh, literati crowd. Uh -huh. um, you'll probably see Paris at one of his dinner parties. You both dated Padma Lakshmi, didn't you? Oh, uh, did, did I? And if, I had, yes, I had a night of wild sex with Padma. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, Is did. that on the show? I, yeah, it was wild, and I am not saying that at all to get publicity for my life on the D-list Mondays at Bravo. I'm not saying that. I'm saying no. it was a connection. It was a relationship. It's a true story. It's a true. I Much did that like scar. It's all over that scar. Yes. Wow. I like it. Yeah. How did it go with you and Salman Rushdie? Well, as a matter of fact, I thought, you know, what do you have to talk about with the guy that wrote the satanic verses and the fatwa and all that stuff? And in fact, um, we had a lot in common. I'll tell you why. While I was interviewing him and the questions that people had to help me with. I don't know what the hell to say to a famous author. I like books with pictures. Anyway, um, I got a text. This was very exciting for me. I got a text from Cher, and I got super excited. I went, oh, Salman, look, Cher just texted me. And he was like, yeah, the singer? Like, he had a total straight guy reaction, which I, my, I wanted to put another fatwa on his head just for that. Yeah, and then because I said, you, you may say, like, ooh, I should change my number. Well, yeah. Right? Well, you should never call me on my personal phone because I'll probably hold up your text. Okay, yeah, I know. Believe me, I life, know. You know not to associate I know not yourself to, with me. And not to engage you in, in any, any social situation. No. Oh, believe me, I've learned that. I've All right, learned the that. the hard way. Yes, but, I have. So yeah. then I found out that um, Salman Rushdie has a share, and his share is Lou Reed, the singer. And so every time Lou Reed calls him, he gets super girly and excited, like oh, I really? do share. So my question for you is who is your share? 
Um, Who's the person that if you get an email or a text from them, you get super excited and giggly? Oh, Huey Lewis, definitely. Still? What do you mean still? I'm sorry. You don't no, just I, toss that sort of thing aside. I know, that was, that's a relationship. Now, has Paris contacted you in any other way besides the lasagna? No, just the lasagna was enough. Yeah, wasn't it? Do you it? think she's doing the rules? No, what are the book, that book, The Rules, where she sent you the lasagna, but then she's going to purposely not call you for three weeks as if she could tell time. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to help her with that calendar. I thing. have a feeling she's going to purposely not call me for longer than three weeks. <laughs> Maybe really purposely never, ever call me is probably what will happen. I, I like that love connection. I yeah, see that would you be as something. a new Hilton. I yes, do. I, I see can... you clubbing, going to Teddy's we and Bella. We have a lot of Showing your common. crotch, getting out of a car. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I like it. I don't think I even have a crotch, to be honest with Paris you. Paris has two. She will well, love you convenient. I'm just saying they've been seen all over the world. I'm Incredible. saying that in a good way. <laughs> Please, that's my personal chef you're talking about. I know. I can't let, now I can't let my mother watch the show because, now, once again, I've offended her with what I've did, said. Does Paris get upset with you when you make fun of her and she was yes, on Paris, your show? Uh, yes, Paris um, what, is on the D-list, and then I do a little thing on her MTV show, um, Paris's new BFF. And she was actually really fun and really easy to work with because she obviously knows the whole reality genre and stuff. And she did ask me in her bizarre baby, almost fetal voice. Oh, no. <laughs> she did ask me to not make fun of her, um, which I, I, you know, I said no, because I can't, I can't make that promise, you know, <laughs> right, ever. Yeah. But right. I do, I take it into consideration, and I feel a little <laughs> guilty as I'm about to make a joke about how stupid she is. But it doesn't but, slow you down well, at all. Well, I've got a mortgage to pay. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's tough times. Yeah, and people should know what they're getting into when they're on your show. She does, now, when, you, when she was here, did she talk like a baby? And um, how far along was she in the pregnancy of her own no. fetal voice? <laughs> was she was she fully formed when she I'm was I'm trying here? to remember. I don't think she talked like a baby, though. No, oh, as I recall. So, I can't believe you're such a hard-on for Paris Hilton. What's happened to you? I can tell. You know she was sitting here doing this goo goo ga ga You loved it. <laughs> no, I have to say, we had an actual conversation. I don't... I, Did you eat the lasagna? Of course I ate the lasagna. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, whoa, sorry. Look at me, for God's sake. <laughs> By the way, speaking of uh, eating lasagna, it looks yeah. like you haven't had a lasagna in years here because you are in the cover of uh, Us Weekly. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's go down right there. See. Who has the better bikini body, you or Tara Reid? And right. you, 84% of the vote you got. That's Congratulations. Right. That's yeah. got to be... For you, that's like an Academy Award. It's like, it's like the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. It's bigger. It's whatever the biggest prizes you can win. But <laughs> That's I, exciting. I kicked Tara Reed's ass, bikini style, and that uh -huh. had to hurt because, you know, sh her diet method is a little more of the, you know, uh, what I'm saying is for her to lose weight is... Uh, it's different. It's different. It's mm -hmm. a unique choice. Uh -huh. um, now, mine don't include breaking the law. However, I do, uh, I do enjoy my banging bikini bod. That's yeah, what it's called. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it's banging. It's what? super, I know, it's super hot and banging. I'm probably going to be, uh, I'm probably going to start banging one of the kids from the hills, like Paris. <laughs> yeah, really? Maybe Which one? Uh, uh, Fluffy, if Fluffy's available. Okay. Fluffy McGee, I think, is available. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and that's right. And I beat uh, Tara Reid in a bikini. Yeah. And that's it's going to be uncomfortable because I see her so often that when yeah. I run into her later tonight, it's going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> that's, but, uh, that's great. Have you heard from her after beating her? Uh, no. It's, I think she's probably working out a lot and that sort of thing. She's probably eating a lot of Paris's lasagna. This may have been just the thing to fire her up. Yeah, to... it's the most, it's, she's like Kirstie Alley and I'm like Valerie Bertinelli. <laughs> she's, did you see, did you see Kirstie? I of course that. I did. You of saw Christy on Oprah, right? Oh, yeah. Wasn't yeah. that insane where she was like frenetically playing with her hair? It was one you, of the craziest Oprah things out, I've which ever is seen. It's very hard to freak Oprah out. Oprah gets freaked out a little bit lately. You know, it seems like she gets ever freaked out. Ever since Tom Cruise with the couch jumping? Yeah, yeah. It seems like maybe that said but her Kirstie was extra super fun crazy. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, she's probably been paid millions of dollars by Jenny Craig. You know, have you called Jenny yet? Uh, no, I don't think she took your call, Kirstie. Yeah. But I'm just saying she probably got a lot of money and then gained the weight back, and that was sort of fun. Well, How do I get that gig? Uh, yeah, I well, you know, you got to start eating some Paris Hilton lasagna. Paris Hilton lasagna. There you go. Kathy Griffin is here. My life on the deal is Monday nights at 10 on Bravo. We'll be back more with Kathy and uh, Ben Harper and Ramon Rodriguez coming up after this. 14,200. Don't laugh at my face. What just happened? Uh, that was brutal. My name is Kathy. Oh, my God. No, no, no. It's all right. It's just that I thought since you had my credit card with my name on it, we're ringing up $10,000 to close. Well, you know, people yeah. make mistakes. It's Kathy Griffin, okay. not Katie, my life on the D-list. And um, 
<laughs> that is why it's not, I swear it's not a scripted show. When that counter girl called me, Katie, to be bitch slapped in front of Paris Hilton, it hurts. Yeah. Like a big handprint on my face. That's I don't, yeah, like. that's got to be a tough thing. I know, you're Paris, as I now call her. You've been, um, you've been, a, you've been uh, cavorting with some pretty A-level stars. Oh, yeah, this year on the D-list, we have quite a cavalcade of stars. You may have to change the name of the program, oh, actually, you stop because, it. Um, well, for instance, you here you are with, um, with T.I. Yeah, the that's cur right. Currently incarcerated. Oh, no, no. <laughs> he's on a uh, vacay. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah, he's yeah. on a little, it's a little journey he's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He enjoys the machine guns. And um, yeah. you know what? I think he's innocent, wrongly accused. <laughs> now, you know, you know he has eight kids. He's like the blocked mom. I kept calling him the blocked mom. <laughs> he's got all these kids. And he was on the D-list, and he was so much fun. And we went to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Nice. I know. Uh -huh. That's not funny. Be Roscoe's with him. And then I believe there's another celebrity in the photo as well. Yes, yes, another big celebrity, the Incredible Hulk, joined you. <laughs> and by the way, look how thrilled T.I. looks to be with him. He looks like he's going to shoot him. Yeah. Not that he would. <laughs> he would no, never. No. That's no, so weird. He wouldn't. He I would have... say that. <laughs> he's, what did he say? He's, uh, you know, he's, he's, the old him is dead and gone. Yeah, that's right. Justin even said it. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, and so we have lots of stars on there. And in fact, uh, T.I. participates in an episode that we do that I'm kind of, you know, sort of proud of. I'm not sure how it's going to go. But we do one about the role of race in stand-up comedy. Is it there? Is comedy colorblind? And so T.I.'s in there. Every black person I've ever met is in, is in this episode. Cat Williams is there, and I use his flat iron. You know Cat Williams? Is and then I go do a set at the Apollo. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. How did that go? Not my way. Did this? Um, <laughs> but I got, can I tell you who gave, gave me the intro? Who? Yeah, Sam and was there. Sam and yes, come out with yes, the hook? Yes, I got yeah. swept. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, but you know who introed me? Reverend L. Sharpton, which was the dream intro of all time. Wow. Who I have a little crush on, by the way. Really? He's and my Paris Hilton, if you will. How did you land the Reverend L. to come introduce you at this? It, it took a lot of, you know. Oh, I mean, you I, told him you were gonna be on, he was going to be on TV? Yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. That's how it, that works wonders sometimes. That, that did it, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then we have a whole Prop 8 episode. Oh, really? Yes. Now, I assume you're for the gay marriage. I am, yes. Of course yes, you do. Yes. What do you care? Right? Yeah, well, that's, right. That's, that's, that's right. So we do a whole thing with Melissa Etheridge. Now, did you, have you been watching Melissa Etheridge talk about pot with Anderson Cooper? I have not. Oh, it's what? heaven. Okay, so where, Anderson Where Cooper, is this happening? Anderson, it's her, at her house. Anderson Cooper <laughs> just goes to Melissa Etheridge's house, and they talk about how awesome pot is. Really? I think he would like it. Anderson, and, <laughs> Anderson Cooper does, does, says? Yeah, aren't you watching High in America? It's an Anderson Cooper special. Uh, it's no, High in America. I missed it, yeah. Yes, and then Melissa Etheridge talks about how much she loves pot, and then they talk about pizza. <laughs> Are yeah. they for that too? They're all for pizza and pot, coincidentally. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, I gotta I'm watch gonna be this. in Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. Oh, I'm getting oh, yeah. a Madame Tussauds wax figure. I'm Are you really? It. Yes. Wow. Because I'm getting one because there's not that much of a difference. I mean, I'm not sure if it's really a you wax want that? figure. Have you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's like me and the Queen have it. Oh, uh, really? And the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like the Queen of England and the Jonas Brothers, sort of. Wow, that will be a strange so I'll thing. be at Mandalay Bay uh, June. Wait, July 3rd, and I'll be getting my wax figure at Madame Tussauds July 2nd. Oh, really? And we'll see if you can tell the difference. Which between... Madame Tussauds is going to be at? Um, Tulsa. No, it's gonna be it's gonna be in the Vegas one. Oh, in the Vegas one. Which is your hometown. Yes, that is my have hometown. Have you ever gone to that, Madame Tussauds? Uh no, no. They didn't have that when I lived there. It's a new thing. Yeah, they've started franchising. Are you making that up? No, really. Okay. They didn't right. have a Madame Tussauds. Do you want a there. wax figure? And let me tell you, there's a Madame Tussauds like right across the street. I've never gone there. You know why? Why? It's full of wax figures. Look, I'm excited and it makes me like the Queen of England and the Jonas Brothers. No, it's cool for you to be in it, I think. I, I think it's, it's fun. A, yeah. It'll be a fun D-list episode. Yeah, well, definitely. Oh, it's going to be on the show. Well, everything's I, on you, the show. I don't take a crap without it being on well, the show. <laughs> We've known each other a long time. Let's stop the charade, shall Well, we? you know what? Um, the show is very, very funny. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's called My Life on the D-list. Mondays at 10 on Bravo and see Kathy June 27th and 28th at the Capital One Bank Theater in Westbury, New York, and in Las Vegas July 3rd. We'll be right